Hello and welcome to A Priori Story Timeless. We're here with Pooh and Piglet. And they're equally enjoying. Nobody's in front of anybody else. I'm glad you dressed up for this Piglet. And we're going to be reading. I think I'll read uh, a poem translated uh, two ways. And uh, it's uh, the Lotus Bloom uh, <clears throat> by uh, Heinrich Heinle, and uh, it says the lotus flower fears before the sun's splendor, and with drooping head she dreamily awaits the night. The moon, he is her lover; he wakes her with his light, and to him she happily unveils her devoted flower face. She blooms and glows and shines and stares mute in the heavens. She exhales and weeps and trembles with love and love's pain. And now on to the story. I uh, got this story, story from uh, handkerchief tied to a stick.com. <clears throat> so if you're looking for a bindle for your Kindle, May want to check that out. <clears throat> you guys ready? All right. All right. You seem excited, Piglet, and Pooh, you do not. That's perfect yin and yang. <clears throat> All right, I'll tell you one. Just one, then you've got to go to sleep. Your mom's already going to kill me for letting you stay up this late. Deal? Deal. I'll tell it to you as it was told to me, but forgive me if the details aren't perfect. This old brain has seen better days. You remember Siddhartha from last time? Yeah, the prince who gave up all his money? Yep, yep, that guy. Well, he had been on the road a long time now and a group of people had taken to following him. Each morning at dawn, these folks who had abandoned their lives gathered to hear Siddhartha talk. The talks weren't religious, not in any organized sense. He was just like, thinking out loud trying to figure out how to live. One of these followers was a young man named Kasyapa. He was new to all of this, Kasyapa. He struggled with the teachings and the others made fun of him for his difficulties, but still, each morning he came and sat before Siddhartha and tried to understand. One morning, the people gathered as usual, but instead of speaking, Siddhartha held up a white flower and sat looking at it. His students waited patiently for him to begin. I'll tell you what patience is another time, Piglet. Minutes passed, then hours. What is it? Someone asked. What's the lesson? said another. Soon it was noon, and still Siddhartha simply sat in silence with the flower. One by one, the people shaking their heads, some in confusion, some in disgust, rose and went about their daily chores. There was still much to be done in a camp in those days, even for poor wanderers, so they drifted away until only Kasyapa was left, sitting alone before the portly sage. He stared and he stared this boy with his brow scrunched and his tongue peeking from the corner of his mouth. He tried with all his power, straining until sweat beaded on his brow, but nothing changed, nothing became clear. I'm sorry, master. I don't know what you want me to say. I don't understand. He let go a long breath. <sighs> Closed his eyes. And bowed his head. He had chores to do. Before he got to his feet, however, he raised his eyes and looked one last time at the flower. And this time, 
in a wordless stillness that stretched on forever. He looked and he saw, he smiled. When he looked up grinning at Siddhartha, the Buddha was smiling too. I don't get it. Hush now, give it time. But why, Shh, child, stop talking. But stop talking and you'll see. And that was the story of Kasyapa and the flower spin. <clears throat> this is a translation of the same poem, The Lotus Blossom. Often in that story, it's told as a white lotus plucked from the river, the pond, probably a pond, I guess, river's edge. The lotus flower fears the sun's splendor. And with bowed head, dreaming, awaits the night. The moon is her lover and wakes her with his light. And to him, she tenderly unveils her innocent flower-like face. She blooms and glows and gleams and gazes silently aloft fragrant and weeping and trembling with love and the pain of love. Thank you very much. Welcome to the satsang.